Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. I am Masjid Mahmood, your instructor for 19th century English novel from Faisalabad campus. I welcome you all in today's session and our today's session is about The Mayor of Casterbridge, the novel by Thomas Hardy, a very a famous novelist. <coughs> so we start This novel, the topic, the mayor of Casterbridge, and in our today's topic, we will discuss only the one aspect of the novel, that is the treatment of nature, or the nature, the treatment with nature. In other words, you can say that how Thomas Hardy treats or presents nature in his novels. So uh, throughout his novels, although it is a mayor of Casterbridge, it is a death of the Deerbe while or other uh, Adam, you know, other uh, novels by uh, Thomas Hardy, we find that nature is a victimizer. Throughout his novels, we can trace this universal phenomena where Thomas Hardy is always, always uh, in the favor of this aspect that nature is a cruel thing and nature always uh, disturbs his characters and whenever there is something bad happening and something uh, do going bad or something happened to become uh, Un, uh, you can say unwise so nature would be dominant there so uh, today we will focus on the mayor of Casterbridge and we'll find how nature is a victimizer in this novel so first of all we start with a brief introduction as we all know from our previous uh, lectures about Thomas Hardy that Thomas Hardy is a late Victorian and very famous novelist. Uh, he is uh, also the poet, but he got his fame as a novelist. Uh, Thomas Hardy is one of the famous uh, British novelists in the late Victorian era. He is considered as the founder of the pessimistic novels also. We see that in all his novels, almost all in his novels, his characters are the victims and his tone is pessimistic and he is, uh, he is always in a position to blame uh, nature for the wrongdoings or mishappenings with his characters. You can get the example of the Tess of the D. Urba Wiles, Adam Bede, The Mayor of Casterbridge and other novels, Jude the Obscure. In all type of novels, his tone is pessimistic. His novels uh, are pessimistic tragedies in one extent, to some extent. We can say modern tragedies. That's why he is also called a modernist as he is uh, from a Victorian era or late Victorian but if we see his works if we see his novels uh, we, we can trace many modernistic aspects we can see more modernism than the original modern writers or modern uh, critics you can say from his works so uh, throughout his novels uh, he uh, presents the same countryside the Wessex and Wessex is uh, probably the south and west southwest areas of England there are some counties are uh, the rustic areas in the south and southwest of present England. He uh, many times talks about 
inner vesex outer vesex of vesex and vesex but he is uh, pretty much particular about the name vesex also uh, although it is a uh, it is an imaginary place but his uh, descriptions his localities or his uh, uh, treatment of the places shows or indicates the places of the or the countrysides of south and southwestern areas of england uh, so you can find vesex a universal thing in a uh, universal setting at the same setting in the a uh, recurring setting in his all novels the major themes by thomas hardy are hopelessness loneliness brutality of war and his sufferings of his characters he is always very particular about the sufferings of his characters uh, he always treat his main characters the most uh, miserable people or miserable personalities in his novel these themes reflect the sufferings of his characters as a result of fate chance and coincidence so throughout these uh, things we can find that he always blames uh, nature for any wrong doings with his characters some of these elements are the causes which make his characters victims Uh, the struggle of thomas hardy's characters are limited to their passion and circumstances which cause their downfall just like as a uh, michael hanchard who is the uh, just like as michael hanchard who is the main or uh, you can say protagonist of the novel a mayor of casterbridge susan and elizabeth jane and others also so these three most prominent uh, characters as you know we have already discussed in a, in previous lectures the characters they are the main characters of the novel and they all uh, find their uh, meet their <coughs> meet their fate by governed by nature and nature is one of the problems in most of his uh, novels by which the negative uh, co consequences of the events occurred in the lives of their people so uh, the mayor of casterbridge is a great novel which presents a wealth of naturalistic details although his all novels present naturalistic details minutely but the one thing that is considered very particular about uh, thomas hardy that as he is from a rural background he is uh, he brought up in the rural area of dorchester so he he pretty much aware from uh, with rural life and agricultural life we can say so he can present he can show the minute observations the minute descriptions of these uh, areas or localities so uh, it shows a view of rural life which is closely linked to nature definitely rural areas are quite close to the nature and at that time where the uh, urban areas were under the influence of industrialization so the rural life was uh, pretty much close to the nature people is in uh, people in this place live a purely agricultural way of life so they are associated with traditional values and customs so uh, we can see that the people in rural areas are more prone towards the traditional ethics and they are uh, less scientific and more uh, you can say prone towards the uh, fate and more prone towards their traditional values they may be superstitions they may be the supernatural characteristics and other sort of things 
Uh, Albert says that uh, founding itself upon an ancient psychology, the mayor of Casterbridge celebrates, first of all, the subordination of the passion that link man with nature to the reason that unites him with God. So oh, here we can see clearly that uh, <coughs> nature unites man to God. So uh, Casterbridge itself seems to be very important throughout his novel. Uh, if we see nature and countryside as the novel starts up in, uh, in Upper Wessex, as I have earlier told you about the some uh, places, Upper Essex, Inner, uh, inner Wessex, Upper Essex, uh, Wessex, and uh, off Wessex. So uh, he is talking about Upper Wessex. Probably some people talk, say that it is Dorchester, the place in uh, England, where uh, Mr. Thomas Hardy brought up in his childhood. So he describes this uh, place, this landscape minutely when he, the Hanchard's family passes, he is, shows the gloominess, he shows uh, the atmosphere is uh, not pretty much pleasant. The rotted, he talks, he presented the imagery of rotted leaves, the dirt clouds uh, reflect the pessimistic state of the characters. So uh, through the this description, he is talking about, in fact, the situation of his characters that they are, in fact, not in a good position. They are not in a very healthy position. So uh, you can see that Casterbridge itself seems to be a dominant character in the novel. It has moods, it has emotions and a magnetic appeal that affects the other characters also. Uh, the Mayor of Casterbridge is a great novel which presents a wealth of naturalistic details. It shows a view of rural life which is closely linked to nature. As I have earlier told you, people in this place live a purely agricultural way of life. They are associated with traditional values and customs. So nature has been presented in a state of decay in the startup of the novel. The emotions of the characters have been drawn accordingly as uh, he shows our uh, shows the gloomy atmosphere so is, so are the emotions of his characters so firstly he demonstrates the gloomy atmosphere of nature its pessimistic uh, description and after that he talks about the emotions of the character that they are in fact the pessimistic, they are in a pathetic situation where uh, Hanchard feels that his marriage is a big mistake and when Susan feels that she is going to be with the company of other men after their lost. This I am talking about the, uh, the, the scene when Mr. <coughs> Hanchard, who is the protagonist of the character, sells his wife and his uh, daughter to the people. And they both are in a departed, uh, a deserted situation. They are, uh, in fact, at the identification of the characters with the natural world works as a mirror to reflect their actions along with the nature, such as Susan's escape. Uh, from the tent of the bar, we can see that uh, nature plays a great role for the downfall of the characters. We'll trace it that uh, the domination of the weather is presented twice in the novel. The first, when uh, the rain rains, Hancher's preparations for a grand entertainment. And second, uh, 
time when Hancher speculates heavily on the weather and loses. That is when he talks, when he thinks that the weather will never be a good one. So uh, he uh, buy grains in heavy amount in return of or on heavy rates. But suddenly after his uh, dealing with the with the uh, people, the weather turns good and he ultimately becomes a, a bankrupt. So here the major aspect that you can see that <coughs> nature is cruel. It is uh, responsible for the bankruptcy of Hanchard face that Hanchard faces and uh, Hanchard uh, loses his mayorship also due to this uh, major decision. The identification of the character with the natural world works as a mirror to reflect their actions along with the nature such as Susan's escape. It is said that uh, when uh, Susan escapes from the tent of barmaid uh, with the help of the appearance of the sparrow, so this sparrow is symbolically uh, representing the nature's nature's uh, uh, you can say nature's uh, decision or nature's uh, nature's uh, signal to escape from the place but ultimately when she tried to escape she uh, meets its down her downfall and that that is why how so the nature participates to bring the downfall of Susan's by preparing the situation to escape from the place uh, you can see students dear students we see that uh, how nature becomes cruel to the people from this when uh, B. R. Malik in his book talks about Hardy embodies fate in various forms Sometimes it appears as a natural force. Hanchard's plan for making himself rich are brought by a bad harvest. The weather takes the part of fate here. So you can see clearly from this that <coughs> Hanchard was discussing about uh, and planning for a very good harvest, but ultimately when he talked, when he makes decision, and he was expecting that he will earn too much money after this dealing the weather becomes good and he ultimately becomes a bankrupt so uh, nature rules the life of most of the characters in this novel such as michael hanchard and farfrey it affects uh, hanchard's life negatively when he predicts uh, that weather is going to be well during the time of his entertainment whereas uh, when works positively with farfrey when the natural world appears for success of his dance for example the trees provide convenience and it has a living state to enlighten his an entertainment it is also effects negatively on the lives of the characters for example we can see the three characters they are also uh, termed as doomed leaves they are Hanchard they are uh, Elizabeth Jane and Susan they are symbolically presented as the doomed leaves as they die before the end of the novel. They die before the end of the novel. Nature gives the last chance to Michael Hanchard when the swallow, when the swallow uh, appears in the tent uh, of the barmaid. And Hardy uses such examples to show that nature is capable of victimizing the human beings. 
nature is also uh, so uh, we can see that he is also of the view that nature always vict uh, victim uh, victimizes the uh, people michael hanchard is the victim of the nature when he walks through the section of cast bridge it seems uh, it means that nature mocks the fact that he has no child in other words you can see he has lost his child elizabeth jane although uh, hence he becomes the first victimizer to his daughter and at the same time becomes a victim of his fate uh, which is determined by nature so you can see firstly uh, <coughs> he uh, was uh, departed from his daughter and secondly he was uh, uh, he was uh, bankrupted by the wrong doings or the uh, mis uh, you can say unpredictable behavior of the weather so for a long time uh, there was none beyond the voice of a weak bird singing a trite old evening song uh, that might doubtless have been heard on the hill at the same hour and with the self same quiver and braves at any sunset of that season for centuries untold so uh, dear students this is uh, these are some lines uh, these are some phrases or uh, clauses have been uh, <coughs> taken from the second page of the novel in this in this you see the singing of the bird it is symbolically presented to give michael hanchard last chance to recover himself from his drinking alcohol so uh, hanchard uh, on the contrary refuses to accept the warning of the bird thus hanchard's behavior is in contrast with the behavior of the inhabitants of the country people so you can see the people the country people were in a good position they were happy but the but on contrary you can see that hanchard meets his fate he was the really disappointed one and the victim uh, victimized the most victimized peop, uh, person in the uh, in the novel so hanchard's tragedy is the uh, is that he has in repudiating uh, his solidarity with human community subverted the order that has placed man in the middle middle ground between god and nature so uh, michael uh, hanchard is the victim of nature when he walks through the section he he also always uh, mocked by the nature he always uh, 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 unexpectedly victimized by nature when he uh, from the very first uh, very first page of the novel you can find you can trace that how nature victimizes throughout the novel and michael hanchard was uh, greatly influenced or greatly affected by the nature so nature can be identified in many ways during the whole life of the characters it can be a uh, the concept of man and fate which the majority of the characters in this novel suffer from nature the human kind is a fantastic image it is a, a <coughs> in, sorry uh, the characters in their doom like michael hanchard elizabeth jane and other so therefore nature plays a great role to affect the lives of characters nature plays a very important role uh, in the uh, <coughs> sorry a very important role so therefore nature plays a great role a very important role uh, to affect the lives of the character it certainly plays as a force and a instrument to instrumental tool to rule the fate as a moral order 
you can see that the uh, handshared on the contrary refuses to accept the warning uh, as we have all earlier told you that uh, Nature uh, Hanchard refuses to accept the warning of the bird, so he meets his con uh, uh, his uh, fate. Nature certainly plays a force to rule characters' fate as a moral order. It, however, brings uh, a man to his end over his right. For example, you can see <coughs> Hanchard sells uh, off his family, Susan, and his. Uh, daughter Elizabeth Jane to a stranger. This shows uh, the scene of the gloomy nature which is presented in the eyes of the hero. It symbolically refers to Hancher's downfall. So the, town sh the townspeople in Casterbridge consider nature as their strength, way to survive, so they live in harmony with it. The landscape surrounds the country of Casterbridge. The townspeople unknowingly believe in the traditional way uh, which destroys their living. Uh, just like as we can see, for example, uh, when Michael Hancher depends on the prediction of the forecaster, he loses all of his grain because the harvest proves to be hostile. Uh, and as a result, he becomes a victim because of the nature as well as mankind. So you can see that first nature uh, changed the atmosphere or you can see uh, nature changed the uh, changed its behavior and weather turned to into uh, unexpectedly into a good way, into a good manner. You can see our good face. But the people who were expecting that the weather would be would remain hostile, so they they get their their grains on on uh, high prices so that turns uh, turns into bankruptcy. So here you can see two people were uh, two things were responsible for the downfall of Hancher. The first one that was the uh, nature, and the second one the speculation the mankind uh, so fate pushes him downward when he refuses to take the comfort of his daughter he puts uh, his uh, hand in his enemy's hand just like as you can see uh, his enemy job it is just because they are identical and have a strange relationship Hanchard stays uh, with job to make him feel uh, his signs of failure. Finally, he returns to the gloomy side of the uh, of the town, handing uh, town handling his depression, his depression in the heart of nature. So you can see that uh, <coughs> he was ultimately uh, meeting with the uh, with his fate. Uh, in next, you can see in Casterbridge, you, we feel two types of beliefs, the rural beliefs and the new inventions versus new inventions. So we see many uh, competitions. We see old versus new. We see gases versus scientific mechanics. Just like as you can see, uh, if we talk about old, it means the Casterbridge, though it was a, it was a, a county, a simple county where the people are the simple and they they believe in they believe in uh, <coughs> old speculations and they believe that nature uh, would turn bad and would turn uh, good to them uh, and they have heavily trust in uh, weathers and weather forecasting our predictions are the gases superstitions and uh, on the other hand if you see scientific mechanics they uh, he is of the view that scientific mechanics are more more handy than the uh, old traditional gases in you can see the clear picture from this just like as in rural belief the nature destroy in nature destroy them their crops and their crops uh, and just like as Hanchard so we, we see Hanchard as the 
representative of the rural beliefs the sign the the rural simple religious beliefs and superstitious beliefs but on the other hand if you talk about which if you see uh, new scientific inventions save the crops just like as uh, farfrey does and farfrey uh, ultimately replaced by uh, replaced by hanchard as the mill so uh, <coughs> so what is the difference between hardy is of the view that hanchard uh, keep on his old uh, traditional religious uh, uh, orthodoxy and uh, get lost and on the other hand you see that uh, farfrey who uh, depends on the scientific inventions and uh, get uh, and he saves his uh, his crops so hanchard is replaced by farfrey's mechanical way of thinking so he is of the view that we should get rid of the orthodoxical uh, ways of uh, thinking and he is of the view that they should the nature should uh, work hard and hardy shows nature destroys and science saves so here you can see the very clear modernistic aspect by uh, thomas hardy the setting of the novel represents the ancient history of casterbridge the people naturally helps one another as per need it means that the customs traditions etc of the society people are still performed for instance hardy has a belief in the isolated community and the incident of the weather prophet in the best example when hanchard loses what all what he has as a mayor in casterbridge this shows that nature affects hanchard's prosperity and makes him a victim of his own working in fact the rural life has some time has some limitations in the way of living and it is true to some extent that it could be replaced by the scientific inventions so it helps people reduce the dependence on knowing the natural rhythms of the country For example you can see uh, when Farfrey invents the machine to replace the bad wheat with good one he brings destruction to the uh, he brings uh, destruction to the life of the poor people who don't have the knowledge in the field including Michael Hanchard so uh, you can see that how modernistic belief our machine uh, replaced the Uh, bearship also it it has been uh, shown that the exchange from one from an ancient to modern inventions is symbolically represented in this novel it is between the relationship of the two mayors of casterbridge hanchard and farfrey hanchard represents the ancient method of predicting the weather his method of farming depends on trust and uh, guesswork which leads him to the downfall so he becomes a simple worker after losing his position as a casterbridge as a mayor in casterbridge uh, as a, uh, you can see there is a limit into man's control over nature but it is not nearly so narrow as hanchard uh, thinks so as a result michael hanchard has been replaced by farfrey's mechanical way of thinking hanchard's death in the deserted cottage is another example which shows how nature destroys the life of the characters in this novel it is an opposite way to the life which hanchard had and as a result the new mayor farfrey occupies the position so uh, the these things are very clear that <coughs> there is a, a true uh, you can say competition between chance and irony that has been shown in the novel also the nature works in the form of two concepts uh, the mayor of casterbridge lies in the country of wessex it is a land which depends in the belief of the farming folk for centuries the farmers are more connected to the land therefore they follow the primal religion which is based on the force of nature as well as the changing of seasons 
for example one of the force of uh, nature is cruel fate uh, which stops the dream of the characters for fulfilling their hope as humans usually this fate works in the form of two concepts the first one is chance for example when we see uh, farfrey and lucita are brought to casterbridge quite unexpectedly but their arrival ruins the life of hanchard who was the um, cast uh, mayor at that time so uh, the second is irony this kind of dooming forces uh, uh, dooming forces work with the uh, characters who are in casterbridge for instance you can see that elizabeth jane has been convinced by michael hanchard as she is his daughter but the letter from susan tells him the truth and disrupts the relationship so again at one time at one at one position it soothes or on the other side it pains or it gives uh, disturbance or tensions so sometime nature helps the element of fate which leads to the downfall of the characters just like as for example we can see the harvest weather so uh, we can see the harvest weather is bad until michael hanchard buys all the rind rind grain at high prices and as a result you see he could not sell it so he faces bankruptcy thus nature participate to make the hero of the novel a victim so uh, some this is a very very important aspect in the novel you we always in uh, in a position to trace that uh, how uh, mr hanchard was uh, victimized by nature firstly he was victimized by nature when he uh, <coughs> when mr hardy depicts or shows the nature the deserted nature the deserted landscape and the ultimate result was his loss of wife and uh, daughter and the second time when he uh, was in the preparation when he was preparing for a great entertainment party and the uh, and he was expecting that the weather would be turn in good uh, turn good but the weather ruins his all entertainment and uh, makes him uh, pathetic uh, but uh, and thirdly when you see <coughs> that uh, mr hanchard was uh, speculating uh, speculating that uh, the weather will remain bad and he uh, he gained uh, the grain at high price but when suddenly he sees uh, that the weather was unexpectedly in a good position and so he was unable to uh, to 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 sell his uh, grains at at high prices so he faces bankruptcy so this is how the nature always uh, depicts its cruel face to the characters presented by uh, Thomas Hardy and secondly you see that how uh, it gives some different positions at one time he uh, sometimes nature from one hand it shows sympathy and on the other hand on the other side we see that uh, it is cruel it is uh, more uh, you can say disturbing and just like as on one hand he was uh, he was given his daughter but at the same time on the other hand the nature uh, steals or steals his daughter from him making him more pathetic and making him more pathetic and more uh, deserted position so uh, <coughs> throughout the novel we can find that uh, Thomas Hardy always shows nature as a cruel entity for his characters he blames nature for the downfall of his characters and wrong doings in his, in the society 
so he is from rustic background and believes in superstitions it is said that uh, from his real life that his mother he is of the view that his mother have, have seen a ghost in his, in her life so uh, this uh, type of superstitious uh, aspects can be uh, traces uh, can be traced from the real life history from of uh, mr thomas hardy so niche so from that uh, perspective we can see that he has developed a superstitious uh, belief a believable behavior from his uh, family so nature destroys in unexpected way that is the whole uh, review of that complete novel so today we we saw uh, we have seen that how uh, naji muhammad showed nature as a victimizer in thomas hardy's a mayor of casterbridge and we saw we saw bear malik and grit alberts uh, hardy a collection of critical essays so dear students uh, that's all for today's session thank you so much Stay safe. Allah Hafiz.